Hi, this is Smitty. I'm a TSA from BMC Blade Logic Network Automation, and I'm giving this demonstration to go over troubleshooting device not acceptable errors. These errors can occur when you're performing snapshot or other type of device action where we try to communicate with a device and the device does not respond. Typically, when seeing this kind of an error, you will see a generic error reported. This generic error shows that the device is not acceptable for one reason or another, and we provide a certain list of things to check to verify before continuing, such as checking the address in a BNA database to ensure that it matches the IP address of the device, checking for SSH public keys, and to check access lists of firewalls and routers to ensure proper routing between the BNA application server and the device. Uh, this error can be either using Telnet or SSH. Um, as in this example, we tried Telnet. And as you can see, if you look into the details of the snapshot, you'll see an additional exception. And sometimes this provides additional information that can help you in troubleshooting. For example, in this case, we received the exception of no route to host, which would be the problem of why we were unable to contact this device. Uh, for SSH, um, you can see various exceptions as well. Um, some things that can cause problems for connecting two devices could be things such as uh, SSH2 versus SSH1. SSH1 was deprecated due to FIPS compliance. And so any devices that are not FIPS compliant and cannot use SSH2, but it can only use SSH1, will not be able to uh, connect or be connected by BNA and be managed by BNA using SSH. Uh, therefore, Telnet would probably be your fallback position. Um, other issues that can arise for not connecting to devices, especially using SSH, is if you look in our device adapter, some devices require that an interactive authentication is performed as opposed to the standard or default where the username and password are sent across in the connection string. You can edit your device adapter and adding this line indicating that this option is true and this will force BNA to perform an interactive SSH authentication. The other problem that you may run into is through uh, the pseudo TTY. Some devices require an actual TTY format to be used when talking to them. Um, the options that you can put in this field would be, for example, ANSI, VT100, or DUMB. These are the ones that we've experienced. So sometimes if you're dealing with SSH devices, uh, you may need to adjust the set, these two settings, um, giving you six options of authentication being true or false and the TTY being ANSI, VT100, or DUMB. Another thing that you can try is to perform a connection from the BNA application server, or if you're using one, a remote device agent. When making this attempt, you want to make sure that you're using the same username and password as located in the device security profile in BNA, so that way you're using all the same settings and the same username and password that BNA uses to connect to the device to ensure com that the connection is, is functioning. Uh, the last thing that um, I'll talk about in this video is, again, with FIPS compliance, because BNA is now FIPS compliant, there are algorithms that are no longer supported. And if the device uh, is an older device and does not have the new algorithms in it, then you will need to disable FIPS compliance in BNA in order to manage those devices. To do that, go into the BNA application server, go into the data directory, and look for the global.properties imported file. You can edit this file and look for the option of FIPS mode. In order to uh, disable FIPS mode, you'll first need to remove the pound sign, go to the end of the file, and change the true to false. Save the file and then restart the BNA web service. At this point, FIPS compliance will be removed for all of BNA, and therefore it will now attempt to use the older algorithms, the less compliant algorithms, to connect to those SSH devices. 
Hopefully this has provided you with information that you may need and be useful to you in troubleshooting this type of problem. I will be releasing some additional videos on troubleshooting device interaction failures in the future. Thank you very much and have a nice day.